What's going on guys? Welcome back to Pat Outdoors. I hope you're having a great weekend. It looks like we're gonna be getting the brushless motor kit that I ordered for the Enduro build in just a few hours. So for the meantime, let's um, continue cleaning things up and prepping the bike for all the new parts. Whenever taking off the decals or stickers from these older bikes, they tend to crumble up into these little white pieces. So your best friend is definitely a heat gun, just gently applying enough heat to it to soften the uh, decal or the vinyl and um, gently pull on it and it'll come off in these larger sheets. If you don't use any heat and just try to rush it, it'll crumble up into these little pieces. And just like what I did with my main bike, I'm going to use a little bit of acetone and a rag to remove this razor branding and this red and white stripe from the factory seat. You just have to use a little bit of acetone and be very light and gentle with the rag so you don't wear the black color off. I'm not really sure why it took that much extra effort to take the paint off this seat versus the one on my newer bike. I guess the red paint is harder to take off once it's baked on there for a couple years, but with enough patience and scrubbing, it all does come off. This bike is cleaning up so quickly with the plastics all debadged, the seat all cleaned up. Slowly but surely, it's coming back to life. I really hope I don't get too emotionally attached to this thing because I tend to get carried away with throwing parts on these things. All right, guys, the new brushless motor kit that I ordered for a hundred bucks is finally here. So let's go open this thing up and see what it comes with. Since this is a budget build, I decided to go with the Weber 1800 watt 48 volt brushless kit. Reasons why is the control it comes with is rated for 33 amps, which is essentially the same as my Kunray kit. And this motor is spec'd out to be almost the same as that one. And it also comes with this really long extension harness, which allows us um, some slack to be creative with where we wanna put the controller. This kit may have been designed for a go-kart though, since it comes with a foot pedal, which I'm obviously not gonna use on this bike. I may use it on my kayak at some point when I do something with that. Um, but for now, I'm gonna set this aside and I'm likely gonna repin this throttle, which came with my Kunray kit to work with this controller. Kit also came with a tool set and some hardware and a sprocket that we're likely not gonna use since these are meant to be used for this bottom bracket style mounting. Like if you're putting this on a go-kart or an MX350, but we're not gonna use any of this stuff since I'm gonna chop this bottom bracket off and modify this to fit inside the swing arm, just like we did on that bike. This kit also came with a wiring diagram, which is kind of funny. It says car wiring function description and all these words are completely useless. Just use the visual diagram, I suppose, but it's very easy to figure out. We'll go through that when we start installing it. Actually, I lied. There's one thing on this diagram that's gonna be very useful, and it's this description of the nine pin plug on the extension harness. 
So just to oversimplify how the whole thing's gonna work, here's the controller, here's the extension harness. The throttle needs to hook up to this end of the extension harness. And then on the motor side, it's just a hall sensor plug, the three phase wires, that's it. That's all that connects to the motors. Unfortunately, the um, this kit didn't come with a junction box, so we're just gonna have to connect the three phase wires to each other. And then this black and red plug, this just goes to the battery. The rest of these plugs are optional items, such as like reverse, three speed controller, cruise control, brake lights. We're not gonna be using any of that on this Enduro build because I want this to be very light and simple. So this one nine pin connector contains all the necessary wires to actually run this thing. So that'll be the two power lock wires and the three throttle wires that come from this throttle. We're just gonna figure out which color is which and wire those up from this side. And then the rest we could leave unplugged. In theory, you could strip down this loom and get rid of all these wires, but we're not gonna do that because I may add some additional features to this bike later on. You know what? Since the connector on the controller is the female side, I may just pin the wires from the throttle directly into it for testing purposes. And once we confirm that everything functions fine when I have the colors in the right combination, I may just repin these directly on this plug and have it connect directly in the controller. So I don't have to run this whole extension harness, which will be a lot cleaner and less wires on the bike overall. Since I don't really know what I'm doing, I'm gonna figure this out by process of elimination. From the harness side, if you look at the male plug, it looks like it follows from this view. Top right is a turn signal wire. Top left is a yellow power wire. So I'm just gonna start depinning the ones that are not important. And I'm gonna leave the five important wires on there so we can figure out which wire is what. Now, if we look at the other side of the extension harness, there's only one three pin connector. So these have to be the wires for the throttle. Just for bench testing purposes, I have four SLA batteries hooked up in a series to supply the controller with 48 volts. And then I just temporarily have the phase wires zip tied to each other. This is not how it's gonna work. I just wanna make sure that my new wiring combination is actually gonna function. Please keep in mind, I'm just some random dude on YouTube doing this for my own enjoyment. This is not meant to be an instructional. Moment of truth. Well, turns on. Oh, it's actually kind of nice that it's not just an on off switch. It's actually a variable speed. Man, I wish my main bike was that variable. All right, guys, now that we know that the kit actually functions and my educated guess of which wire goes to which was pretty successful, I can now bypass this whole harness and repin this connector to these five wires. Don't get confused which slot each one of these five wires goes to. I made myself a little diagram as a reminder. I boxed out the four slots that are gonna be left open and then the five wires that are actually gonna be used on the controller side, I made a chart that matches it to the five wires from the throttle side. Feel free to pause this video if you are gonna to try to attempt this. Looks so much cleaner without that huge wiring harness in place. So let's go test this out to see if it actually works. functions. Now it's time to modify the motor so it'll actually fit the razor. First thing we got to do is take a cutoff wheel and cut the welds off both sides of the bottom bracket and then clean things up. Then after that we have to take these two bolts off and take a drill and countersink the holes on the end cap to allow the bolts to sit completely flush so you don't want to see the heads of the bolts. 
That'll allow the motor to slide firmly in place in the swing arm and be secured in place. I'm also going to be transferring the stock sprocket from the original motor onto the new motor. What I'm using to countersink the holes on the end caps is a 5 16 high strength steel drill bit. You don't need to drill too deep into the end caps, just enough till the heads of the bolts sit perfectly flush with the surface. The 5 16 drill bit appears to be the perfect size. I think I went too big with my previous motor. On the other side, I just trimmed one of the bolts short so it also sits flush with the surface. This usually gets in the way with the other side of the swing arm. But came out all right. The cuts here are a little rough, but it doesn't do anything, so I don't really care. This motor is ready for install. Here's what the motor looks like mounted. The two case bolts that we countersunk are in here. The reason why you have to countersink it is so it sits flush with the inside of the swing arm. And then on the other side, it's just one bolt. And then the stud that we trimmed is this lower one, which usually gets in the way with this bracket. So that's it, installed easily. So here's where we currently stand with the budget enduro build. The motor's been modified and installed. The body and the chassis is all cleaned up. I'm not gonna install the controller and throttle just yet until I figure out my battery situation. So far, I've spent about $150, $160 between the brushless kit, which is insanely cheap, the um, hand guards and the extended rear shock. The rest of the stuff I already had laying around here. The battery is typically the most expensive part for these type of projects. So that's what I'm currently trying to figure out, like which direction I'm gonna go, whether or not I'm gonna try to revive my BTR 48 volt power pack, which would leave a lot of room in the budget if I were to make that work. Because currently I only have like $340, $350 left to spend. And I still wanna put a fork on this thing at the very least, I'm going to rebuild the fork. That and I want to get some really knobby tires and some other small pieces. So if you have any suggestions for an affordable battery, please comment it below and I'll definitely check it out. If you are interested in checking out all the parts that I'm using for this project, I will have them all linked in the description below. But if you found today's video helpful in any way, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you like this kind of content, want to keep up with my Enduro project or any of my other builds, consider subscribing to my channel, but this is gonna be it for today. Thank you for watching.